at least since last year. I'm probably not in, um, kind of helped by the normal here at uh, St. Joseph's, uh, especially on the weekends, and up with masses and weekdays as well. And so he said, you like taking kids' mass, why don't you take kids' mass on Wednesday? I said, I love that. And so uh, he agreed to do, uh, do that this week. So I wanted to let you know who I am a little bit. I come from Canton, Ohio. Uh, Canton's probably best known for the professional football hall of fame. Big parades and celebrations there. Uh, come from a parish, not like this one. Uh, when I left last year, we had a school with about 400 kids. They all wore uniforms just like you, they look just the same um, in most ways. And uh, we had uh, kindergarten, preschool, and about uh, eighth grade. And so, similar to yours, and we had the Mass for the Children every Wednesday. Um, and so, same as you do. So, lots of similarities. About the same size, and you almost look high, and so it's nice to see all that. Um, let me see who's here. Sixth grade, where are you at? Sixth grade, raise your hand. Okay, good guy. In seventh grade, how many in seventh grade all together? 20. 20. 20. Well, one class or two? Two. Two classes, oh, that's nice. Eighth grade, how many in eighth grade? 20. Up. How many in eighth grade? 24. 24? Two classes? Yes. Which one? Six grade? Six grade. How many in sixth grade? 20. 20. Two grades? One one class. Okay. So when you're in a homo, you're going to talk about uh, Simon and Jude. Anybody here named Simon? Anybody here named Jude? Good morning. Welcome to our celebration of the Eucharist. In order to maintain reverence during Mass, please silence your cell phones at this time. Thank you. The Twelve Apostles were chosen by God to be a strong foundation upon which the Church continues to build. Today we celebrate the Feast of Saints Simon and Jude. Both Simon and Jude were ordinary men who were chosen by Jesus himself to teach others about God's love and to make disciples of all nations. Their lives help us to understand that even the most average people can become saints when they decide to follow Jesus. The letter of Ephesians describes the church as the household of God, with the apostles and prophets as its foundation and Christ as its capstone. In the gospel, after going up the mountain and spending the night in prayer to God, Jesus chooses 12 apostles. Welcome to our celebration of the Eucharist. Today is Wednesday, the 30th week in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant is Father Don King. This Mass is being offered for Hodgson J. Maticardus. Join us in singing our opening hymn projected on the wall. Please stand.
Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning again. Good morning. Good morning, Father. Coming together as God's family, let us ask the Father's forgiveness for his full of gentleness and compassion. <laughs> Jesus, you raise us to new life. O God, who by the blessed apostles have brought us to acknowledge your name, graciously grant, through the intercession of Saints Simon and Jude, that the Church may constantly grow by increase of the peoples who believe in you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Our response is, the message goes out through all the earth. Their message goes out through all the earth. The heavens declare glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day pours out the word today, and night to night imparts knowledge. Their message goes out through all the earth. Not a word, nor a discourse, his voice is not heard. Through all the earth, their voice resounds, and to the ends of the world, their message. Their message goes about through all the earth.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went up the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. When day came, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Simon who was called the Zealot, and Judas the son of James, and Judas Iscariot who became a traitor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, everything that we do at Mass, prayers, readings, uh, our up, stand, standing up and down and our singing, all those things are to remind us that the message is about us and not so much about what went on in the past. Today we celebrate a special feast day, the Feast of St. Simon and Jude. And so it invites us to kind of think about us through their eyes and their experience. And so we'll look a little bit at their experience today. To, to sort of clarify, there are, in the, the Apostles, Jesus didn't choose very much variety. There are three, two Jameses, and there are two Simons. There's Simon the Zealot. Anybody know what a Zealot is? A zealot is someone who's zealous about something. We think Simon is probably zealous about telling people that they need to change the way they live. So there's Simon, Simon Peter. Of course, we know it's Peter, Simon. And then there's uh, Jude Thaddeus, because well, that's two names. And there's Judas, which is kind of a derivative of that same name. So there's two Jude Judases, and they have separate little extra pieces on their name just to help us know which is which. About Simon and Jude, we know very little. Right? So most of what came down to us, they were sort of like, you know, there were 12 apostles of the 12. The least well-known were probably those two. We don't know what they did. We do know now that St. Saint Jude is often considered as someone who prays you when things are really tough. And so Jude is uh, the patron of hopeless causes. <coughs> um, how many of you play sports? Right. How many of you have ever been in a situation where somebody said, Let's pick sides. Pick sides, a few pick sides. And when you pick sides, you know what's going on. Once you're, you're kind of deciding who's going to be on this side, who's going to be on that side, so you can play a nice game of volleyball or baseball or whatever it might be. Usually not as an official game, but as kind of a, a throw together game in the neighborhood or something like that. So, or out in the playground, you say, we'll pick sides. I don't know about you, I was always the last one picked. I hated that. Of course, I was, it was understandable because I was lousy at baseball, but I still got the last one pick. Um, but when you pick sides, you pick sides, you go looking for the best persons for your team. And so everybody lines up there and says, Ch -ch 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 -ch. I'll take Joe, I'll take Mary, I'll take Fred, I'll take John. And, you know, so we, we, we decide. And the last people are usually the ones who are least good at what you do, what you're playing. Now, think about it, if you were doing the same thing about academic challenge, and some of the teachers said, okay, now pick sides, because we're gonna do a session of academic challenge in the classroom. Would you pick the best baseball players? Probably not, no. Would you pick the best volleyball players? Probably not. You'd look to pick the best thinkers. You'd pick the best people to think so that your team would be strong when it comes time to give answers to the questions in the academic challenge. You think of so strong people in that way. So we, we pick depending on what we're picking for. Jesus has a bunch of followers. One day he goes up in the mountain, he prays all night long. God, help me pick the right ones to be my special apostles. At the end of that, he comes down the hill and he chooses from all those other people, like there's seven or eight or maybe, he pulls out 12. I pick you, son. Jude, I pick you. 
Simon, I think you, but I want your name to be Peter from now on. So you, Peter, you come. Matthew, you come. And he goes through the whole list and he says, 12 of those guys, he gets them together and says, now listen, I want you to be my special team. I want you to be the people who, who make uh, my job a little easier. I want you to be the ones who specially share in my job. What was Jesus' job? Anybody have an idea? Everybody tell me what Jesus' job was. To spread the word of God, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. He spread the word of God. How do you do that? Through word of mouth, by talking to people along the way. He walked miles and miles and miles, huh? And he talked to people all along the way, and he spread the word of God that way. And, hmm? and through the prophets, through the people who came before him. How many others? How about it? Through his miracles. So he showed people, look at this. I want you to see this now. I want you to hear God's word that I'm going to say, say to you. So he did all those things. And then finally, he, he, he got these apostles. And he said, I want you to help me because there's a lot of world out there. I'm only one person. I can't walk the entire world. And so I need some of you to help me. And not only that, he says, but besides that, I'm going to leave you because I'm going to die. They're going to kill me. And so I need you, even after I'm dead, to go around and to spread the news. Sometimes they did miracles. Sometimes they acted like prophets. But they spread the news. And you know, that was 2,000 years ago in a tiny little place called Israel. Now, 2,000 years later, that news is known in every corner of the world. Those 12 apostles he chose did a pretty good job. Did a pretty good job. Since that time, those 12 apostles and the other 70 that were around him have one by one chosen other people to go out and to spread the good news. How many of you are baptized? Okay, how many of you are chosen? Hands up, if you're baptized, you're chosen. That's the good news today. Yeah. If you're baptized, you've already been chosen. You didn't get a choice. You've already been chosen to be one of the people who pursue spreading that good news into the rest of the world. Jesus depended on those disciples. If Simon or Jude had not done their job, There'd be a whole piece of the world that didn't get the good news. And it's the same with you. There's a piece of the world that's waiting to hear the good news of Jesus, the good news of happiness and God's forgiveness and all the love that God we can know about God. There's a whole piece of the world that needs to hear that from you by what you say, and more importantly, by how you live, what you do, the good things that you do, the good people that you are, the way you reflect what Jesus was like. So today as we celebrate Eucharist, we celebrate our call to be followers of Jesus. Some might be called to more specific following, like priests and bishops and sisters and deacons. Uh, most of us are called just to be regular followers. Whether you're called to be regular or whether you're called to be that special kind of follower that Jesus sets aside and says, these are my apostles, no matter what, know that you have a job to do. You got picked for the team through your baptism. Jesus now wants to rely on you to get that good news out to the world. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we offer these petitions to the Father. That God may continue to raise up faithful men and women who will respond to his call and consecrated life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our nation and civic leaders may receive the grace and blessing of our Almighty God in performing the duties for those whom they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let all refugees and asylum seekers 
may find safe shelter and be welcomed into their new communities. Let us pray to the Lord. That all gathered here may be blessed with the courage of St. Simon and Jude to respond to Christ's call to discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, That all who have gathered may be welcomed home as beloved members of God's family. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, we thank you for the gifts of faith and for the call to be your disciples. In our gratitude, we ask you to hear and answer the prayers we bring to you today. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Join in our presentation song, Here I Am, Lord. so that they may become for us 
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
see the host step side to side, then take off your mask and, and consume the host and put it back on the paper. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
Let us pray. Having received this sacrament, O Lord, we humbly implore you in the Holy Spirit that what we do to honor the glorious passion of the Apostles, Simon and Jude, may keep us forever in your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. Special thanks to those who are at home, watching, to all of you who come from school. So nice to be with you. Thanks for the opportunity. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration of you is ascended. Go in peace to do good things in the name of Jesus. Thanks be to God. Please join in our special song, Don't Make a Difference.